Hello and welcome, we are Sorted Food and today two of our normal home cooks will be tasting and reviewing four chocolate trends. Four things under the cloche, plenty to talk about. Lots of chocolate. Mm -hmm. Shall we? Trend number one, lift the cloche. Okay, ready? It's a giant cocoa bean. I don't think it's giant. I think that it just is a cocoa bean. Bean? They're pods. They're pods. Pod pods. Oh, oh my goodness, it's open. Okay. So open up, have a look. Barry, the one you've got in front of you, is from Ecuador. Jamie, yours has not been cut into, but it's from <laughs> St. Lucia. <laughs> I thought I was really strong for a second then. <laughs> So the trend we're looking at is some research that said two thirds of consumers would like to know more about where their chocolate comes from and what it is. Have you ever tried inside a fresh cocoa pod? No. No. Cheers. It's soft. But with a crunch. Very bitter. Doesn't taste like chocolate. Oh, look at that. My impression is this is going to have the texture of coconut. Almost furry, like it's going to have a peach as well, isn't it? It's kind of fluffy. It's Springy. Spongy. Spongy. But hard, I Yeah, hard, hard sponge. Cheers. It's really, oh, it's got a bit oh. dry, one. Got a bit. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. What are you getting? Um, well, <laughs> that's actually very enjoyable. Straight away, you get a pop of freshness. Yeah. From the flesh. A very tropical fruit style mm. pop. But then, of course, inside there's an incredibly bitter, He's a cho cocoa bean. Whoa! Ebers! Cocoa butter. Yeah. And cocoa nibs. Correct. Now the cocoa nibs still have the fat in them, but once it's processed, about 50% fat, that cocoa butter comes out. And the cocoa butter, also used in cosmetics, when combined with dairy and sugar, becomes white chocolate. Some of it is added back into. That's not what I expected. That's not white chocolate, it's no, that's not, it's not just fat. It's not the milky bar kid, that. No, that's just like eating a lump of coconut fat. And there is a flavour of, of white chocolate. As always, all the products today we have bought ourselves, but we will link down below where we got them from because it's such a fascinating experience. If you wanted to try it, there are only a few places in London that will be able to get hold of them for you. The flesh around the cocoa beans is also useful, incredibly sweet, can be turned into juices, and some companies are even using it to sweeten chocolate. So rather than adding sugar from a cane, they're now adding the sweetness of the cacao flesh to make it 100% cacao, co cacao <laughs> even though it's only perhaps 70% cocoa bean. Phenomenal. Our next three items under the cloche take chocolate to different places. Back on four members. Good closhing. Choco-co-co-co-co-co. I have a dark chocolate ocean egg. I have a milk chocolate dinosaur egg, studded with mini chocolate dinosaurs and ammonites. Open it up, have a look. These are both from Chococo. And the trend we're talking about is the importance that consumers have on the world around us. Oh, wow. Also, Jay, no plastic. Good man. No plastic. Yeah, I'm massive. Yeah, <laughs> better. <laughs> Embrace it. That is a very pretty egg. That is... Ah, show himself. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. This is what happens when you buy kids Easter eggs. Look at this. Okay, mine's very different, and mine's a little bit pro You've got little turtles and, and starfish inside. Can I break into mine? <gasps> do it. Oh, that's little tap. Like a kinder egg. Oh. <gasps> mine is full of fossils that look nearly as old as Evers. <laughs> I love this, Evers, but... Are Easter eggs really a trend? So there's always a bit of a space for novelty at Easter, and I like the throwback to the Jurassic Coast, where this artisanal husband and wife team have been making chocolate for 20 years. But also, the trend we're looking at is the importance of trust, legacy, and reducing plastics. Claire, one of the founders, before she started this business, she sailed around the world. 
and she saw the impact on our oceans that were happening even 20 years ago. So from starting this chocolate business, even their chocolate gift box selection comes with paper separations. Wow. It's been ahead of the times when it comes to plastic reduction. It's so rare to see novelty delivered with class. No, <laughs> no. So Baz, yours is 72% chocolate, so dark chocolate. And Jay, you've got the kind of white milk mix. Wow. Best Easter egg I've ever eaten. Bold. We've had a lot of Easter eggs here, and they're always like falling one side of the line. Novelty to actual quality. Here, they've, they've, they've married the two perfectly. And with responsible packaging in mind, the last thing to add, every one of those ocean eggs they sell, they donate to the Ocean Giants programme. So a charity that is also helping to clear up and prevent further damage to our seas. You're starting to see more and more companies set up that are purpose-led, that are trying to do good things from the start whilst creating products that people will love. And what's different about this team is that they seem to have been doing it before it became it was a trend, it was trendy. trendy. They were just set out from the start to do it the right way. Price-wise, their oh. giant egg, they do do smaller ones too, but their giant egg, it's always more expensive than we have been led it's to It's what you should be paying for chocolate. Yes. So I'm going to say 30 pounds. Oh, I, more, really, for one egg? It's a big egg. They've won 100 national and international awards and everyone is still handcrafted. I'd say 18 pounds. Jamie was closer, 27 pounds 50. I can't argue with that price. And, and for that, you'll get egg with a Barry seal of approval. Let's bring on round three. I'm having a great time. Of course you are, I'm feeding you chocolate. There's two more. Right, ready? Lift the cloche number three. Are they chocolate sausages? He's giving us a chocolate sausage. <laughs> also. <laughs> we have three. Chocolate sausage sauce. Oh, salamis. They're chocolate salamis. Chocolate salamis. salamis. We've made chocolate salami before. We have made chocolate salami Years ago. Before. To hang it up, as you would see, or maybe an artisan still in the market, lots of salami hanging up. It's our chocolate salami. Sort it. it. Wasn't it like Rocky Road in a sausage shape? Pretty much. Oh, yeah. Rocky Road. Oh. Rocky Road salami. See, trendsetters. Look at us. So what you have there, is three products from Coco Chemistry. So the trend we're looking at is chocolate breaking the mold, i.e. at Easter, consumers looking for other shapes and forms rather than just eggs. Like sausage. Like sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I like these. Should we try some? <laughs> yes. Ooh. So inside, you've got chocolate, walnuts, and some date in there, in my slice. Like a dark chocolate coating with a more milk chocolatey inside. Mmm. Yeah. It's a chocolate truffle log. Mmm. It's tasty. Ooh. It's really tasty. I like it. Does it add anything to it being in the, in the shape of a what? It's How not in the shape to... of a poo, it's in the shape of a salami. How are you picking holes in things that are novelty? This is your life. Novelty with class. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best. Chocolate sausage <laughs> I've ever had. Oh, Barry's badge is back. Let's <laughs> get his badge back out. I quite like the small artisan producer, and these two in particular play to sort of the, the inner geek inside of me, which is that they started life as chemists. And then they transferred from corporate life to chocolate making, but kind of took all of that science and understanding into cocoa chemistry. So I think the way that this is packaged and how it looks like it's marketed this is going for the gift market. To me, this is what this feels like. It's going for the gift market. And the type of person that this would get bought for is me. As in, the type of person who is known for liking meats and salamis and novelty. chorizos and that kind of thing. And it's a novelty <laughs> yeah, thing, yeah. Like, oh, it's a chocolate one. Now, I look at it and go, God, not that, me. <laughs> that's novelty and doesn't look very good. Tasting it, it tastes great. And if it's all responsibly sourced and all of that kind of thing, that's brilliant. But. I'd prefer it in a 
ball. Like, I want those flavours in a ball. I am amazed. So consumers are looking for new trends and new forms, and you just want a chocolate truffle? I could not disagree anymore. It's done with a smile, and it delivers on quality, and I just, I can't get enough of this. This is great. What about price? I like it, I like it. <laughs> price, <laughs> uh, five pounds. Oh, I don't know. I'd go more like seven. A range of flavours up for grabs, but we bought three, and they were 10 pounds each. I've, I've never bought a chocolate slime, so I wouldn't know what to pay for it. Um, but if you're paying for that weight in truffles, it's about, not that bad, I don't think. Yeah, go on. Yeah? Yeah, final one. It arrives to your letterbox like that. Oh. Okay, right. Willie's Cacao. Again, another example of a company with a fantastic backstory. We can come to that in a minute. But this is their discovery box. And the trend we're looking at is consumers on the hunt for more experiences. It's definitely a trend. Um, but I didn't know Willie's were doing one. So you can either buy them as individual discovery boxes, which this is, as a gift or for yourself, or they do do a subscription. But basically, you get a whole bunch of different chocolates, tasting notes, a flavour wheel, and you can watch a video online of how to taste chocolate and what it is you're tasting. So this first one, Pure Gold, is 100% cacao, and it's a bean that has low acidity, and it's been conched for three or more weeks. Worth the wait, taste those silky, nutty notes rolling in. <laughs> no, woo! There is no sweetness there. Yeah. It's very silky though. Very nutty. This is not about enjoyment. Uh, enjoyment of this particular bar. It's about setting kind of me on a on a, on a journey. It's the enjoyment of the journey. It's it's incredibly bitter and drying, mm. yet it's melting slowly and it's it, it feels luxurious, but tastes quite intrusive. So Willie, if you've never heard of him, he is the, the founder of the business. It started for him in Venezuela. He was on holiday. He met an artist who said, go to where the mountains meet the sky. And he walked up the hill and in that hacienda, looked out and fell in love. Sold his London flat, bought a cocoa farm, and the rest of the story is history. From day one has won awards, not just for chocolate, but for packaging as well. And it's a really interesting journey as he's trying to get people to understand more about chocolate, the taste, and not just single origin in terms of country, where does your chocolate come from, but single estate. If somebody said to you, what wine is this? And you said, it's French. That's not really enough. You want to know which region? We don't think about that with chocolate. You say, what's this chocolate, Venezuelan? Well, actually, it's very specifically one estate. So we're moving on to two others. Mm. So we've got the Rio Caribe 72 mm -hmm. should get some complex layers of coffee and nuts. First one was like I sat in first class, but it was a really dodgy takeoff. Suddenly, we're now 30,000 feet and we're gliding. That's spectacular. Relatable. So this is the Las Trincheras, also from Venezuela. Same bean, still 72% cacao but should taste very different. Oh. It's more creamy. That is creamy. It's more creamy. That's, that's the word I was going to say. We're not chocolate experts, as you can tell. But they are spectacular. And that's kind of the journey this is trying to take you on. The journey takes you through milk chocolate and white chocolate as well, plus varying percentages, as well as different estates within the same country. Chances are, you're not going to sit down and eat all of these in, in, in one sitting. Um, but I like the fact that you've got a map there as well to kind of, every time you do dip back into the box, you know where you're going and what's next in the journey. In terms of discovering chocolate and learning that two with the same bean and the same percentage from the same place could be so different from each other, like as an opportunity, that is incredible and to have be able to have that at home as well, I think is really good fun. 
10 bowls of chocolate, 50 grams of pop. With the flavour map, the wheel and the video online, the tasting experience, sourced from all over the world, responsibly, including from his own cocoa farm in Venezuela. How much? I'm going to keep it simple. It's 10 bars, they're 50 grams each. You're it's 50, 50 pounds. Quid, aren't you? Yeah, 50 pounds. I'm too spenny, I think 40 pounds. The Discovery box, it's 22.99. Huh? No. Is that an experience you want in your home? Yes. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I think it's a fantastic experience. That feels very cheap compared to everything that we've just learned about chocolate. I think that's brilliant. I, gen I think that's amazing value and quality there and a learning experience. Selfishly, I found that quite interesting, but we want to hear your opinions too. So comment down below so everyone can give them a read. And if you enjoyed it and found it useful, give the video a like. Maybe you'll get a Barry Badge of Honour seal approval. What would be your staff seal? No, 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 can't talk about that. So this is one of those things that if you think about Easter, certainly in the UK, it's a time to come together with family. I feel like this is one of those things that comes out mid-afternoon and is something to share. <laughs> Whereas, if I'm honest... Yeah, but you can't say it comes out mid-afternoon when it looks like that. <laughs> After a big lunch, this is something you whip out in the afternoon <laughs> with, with a coffee right, or something no, that no, is better yeah. to share.